Okay, in this video, I'm going to do some benchmarks on the new Apple iPad, or the third generation iPad, or as I will be calling it, the Apple iPad 3. Now, I have a whole host of videos posted on the Apple iPad 3, and if you're interested in any of them, click on the link at the end of this video. Also at the end of this video, I'll have a link of the benchmarks on the Apple iPad 2, so you can see how that device fared on the same benchmarks that I'm going to do in this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this folder here that I have already set up, and it's my benchmark folder. And the first one we're going to do is 3D Bench. Now this is actually an iPhone app. Now this benchmark is actually part of a game called Defend London, and it's basically telling me here that I could uh, see it if I wanted to. But I don't want to see it, I just want to go straight to the benchmark, which is what it's doing right now. And I'm getting about 44 frames per second. Okay, here are my results. Let me actually mute this. The time it took to do the benchmark is 12.41 seconds. The average frames per second were 40.19 frames per second. Now the Apple iPad 2 scored 59.96 frames per second in 8.32 seconds. And the reason for the difference in the benchmark is that the Apple iPad 2 is running at a much lower resolution. The screen is one-fourth the resolution of the Apple iPad 3. So it takes a lot more processing power to actually put graphics out to this Retina display on the Apple iPad 3. So let's move on to the next benchmark. And that benchmark is Gen Sistec Lite. And this is Gen Sistec Benchmark Lite. You can purchase the full version if you'd like. The light version gives you access to test number one. The full version gives you all three tests. And I definitely urge you, if you're interested, to purchase this app because it'll give you full access to all the tests. But in this video, we're just going to do test number one. And it says, please, before starting the tests, close all open applications. So let's do that. Okay, I closed out all of my apps, and I'm going to start the test. Test number one, floating point calculations, arithmetic logic unit. And it's processing. Test number one completed, time 2.36 seconds. Test number two, pi calculations, calculations of pi approach. Test number two completed, 3.22 seconds. Test number three, MD5 calc. Calculations MD5 hash. Test number three completed in 2.38 seconds. Test number four, save screenshots to disk. Test number four completed in 6.58 seconds. Test number five, speed read write RAM memory. Test number five completed in 1.23 seconds. Test number six, speed read write flash disk. Test number six completed in 2.19 seconds. Test number seven is Quartz 2D, linear graphics with Quartz 2D. Test number seven completed in 2.57 seconds. Test number eight, resize image, resizing images. Test number eight completed in 7.66 seconds. Test number nine, 3D rotations of images.
Test 9 completed in 5.25 seconds. Test number 10, 3D graphics performance with OpenGLES. And you get some cool graphics here. And it looks like a solid 60 frames per second up here. Test 10 completed, average frames per second, 60. Okay, here's the performance report. It shows that I have an Apple iPad 3 with one gigabyte of RAM. The CPU is an ARM Cortex A9 MP Core, dual core, Apple A5X chip at one gigahertz per core. And of course, this is a dual core CPU. The GPU is a Power VR SGX 543MP4, a quad core GPU. The screen resolution is 1536 by 2048, and it's running iOS 5.1. It gives today's date and then shows that this device is not jailbroken. And then it gives the results down here. The FPU ALU test was 2.36 seconds. On the Apple iPad 2, it was 2.3 seconds, so it was quicker on the Apple iPad 2. The Pi calculation on this device was 3.22 seconds. On the Apple iPad 2, it was 3.72 seconds, so the Apple iPad 3 was quicker in this test. The MD5 calc test was 2.38 seconds. On the Apple iPad 2, it was 2.47 seconds, so again, quicker here on the Apple iPad 3. The screenshot test was 6.58 seconds on the Apple iPad 3, and it was 4.78 seconds on the Apple iPad 2, so quicker on the Apple iPad 2. The RAM test was 1.23 seconds on the Apple iPad 3, and 1.45 seconds on the iPad 2, so it was quicker here on the iPad 3. The disk test was 2.19 seconds on the Apple iPad 3 and 2.28 seconds on the iPad 2, so it was quicker on the iPad 3. The Quartz 2D test was 2.57 seconds on the iPad 3 and 2.62 seconds on the iPad 2. The resize image test was 7.66 seconds on the iPad 3 and 7.74 seconds on the iPad 2. The Trans 3D test was 5.25 seconds on the iPad 3 and 5.1 seconds on the iPad 2, so it was quicker on the iPad 2. And the OpenGLES test was 60 frames per second on the iPad 3 and 60 frames per second on the iPad 2. So we have a tie there. And the total score for the iPad 3 was 33.45 seconds. The total score for the iPad 2 was 32.46 seconds. So the iPad 2 finished this test almost a full second faster than the iPad 3. But the iPad 2 was only quicker than the iPad 3 in three of the tests. The iPad 3 was faster than the iPad 2 in six of the tests. Okay, let's do the final benchmark in this video, which is LinPack. Okay, now there's a couple of options here, but we're gonna stick with the standard problem sizes, and you can do the N equals 100 test or the N equals 1000 test. We're gonna start with the N equals 100 test and the test completed within seconds, actually 0 0.0026 seconds, so that's very fast, and the device scored 267.008 megaflops per second. The iPad 2 scored 60.792 megaflops per second. So the iPad 3 scored about 207 megaflops per second higher than the iPad 2. So I'm going to hit OK here, and we're going to try the N equals 1000 test. OK, and the test was completed in less than a second, even though it did take a little bit longer this time. 
but it still was less than a second. The time was 0.746 seconds and the device scored 895.687 megaflops per second. In comparison, the Apple iPad 2 scored 895.161 megaflops per second. So very close. In this test, the Apple iPad 3 scored about half a megaflop per second faster than did the iPad 2. So that pretty much does it for this video. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And if you want to help out my channel, give me a thumbs up or favorite this video. If you're interested in any other videos I have on the Apple iPad 3, click on the link at the end of this video. So that's it for now. I'll see you guys next time.